you know, our field's really, really good. We threw a lot of balls yesterday and, um, you know, kind of waking up today to, to see how it was going to feel. And it feels great. And, and that's kind of what I anticipated because we've been working more than usual in off season in, in terms of growing. Um, I've, I've, I've put together really a regimen of, of two to three days a week uh, of throwing uh, for the last probably kind of two months, if, if not longer than that too. So um, I think the plan is still to kind of um, really kind of pitch count, if you will, through training camp. Obviously this is a little different training camp because you're not really doing one-on-ones and you're not doing seven-on-seven -seven right now. So right now we're just building up and, and work on timing with receivers, tight ends, running backs, things like that. So um, I, I have had no setbacks. It feels, it feels really, really good. And so I, I'm really excited about that. Ben Roethlisberger talking to reporters for the first time this season. Had that elbow surgery last year that knocked him out of 15 games, actually 14-plus games. The Steelers were thrown into disarray, and they still almost made it to the playoffs with Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges at quarterback. Chris, you talked to Roethlisberger last year, training camp, and he said he basically doesn't do anything in the offseason. Well, now he's starting to realize he's got to put in the work if he wants to extend the career. He looks leaner. He looks more fit. I've seen pictures of him on Twitter where he looks like a different yeah, guy. Right. Uh, and and he said yesterday <clears throat> he's still in it to win Lombardi's with an S. He's got two on his resume. It's been a long time since the last one. It's now 12 years since the second Super Bowl victory, 10 years since the last Super Bowl appearance by the Steelers when they lost to the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and, and, and look. I, I, I'm never going to count out the Steelers, especially when you count them out is when they rise up and bite you in the butt and go to the Super Bowl and potentially win it. This team is dangerous. Mike Tomlin is one of the best coaches in the NFL. If Roethlisberger is healthy and they can get some production in the running game and get someone to stretch the field that's offensively, yep. that, that defense has gotten so much better. Quite, that's the reason why that team had a chance last year. It wasn't the offense. It was the defense. If that offense can get back to what it was just a few years ago at a time when the defense is much better than it had been in years, this is a team that could be very dangerous. I, I agree, Mike. I, I think there are one of those teams that, you know, we might not put in that main conversation for Super Bowl with some of the elite teams, but like, you know, yeah, sitting here right now, August, whatever the hell day it is, 6th. Or whatever, five, or five six, early five, August, five. And would I be sit? Would I, I wouldn't be shocked if it came February and the Pittsburgh Steelers were in the Super Bowl. This, the defense is a Super Bowl defense, as you just mentioned, you know. And they were, you know, very good last year with absolutely no offense and just really below average quarterback play in a lot of games. So to have Big Ben back and to hear that he's been throwing and everything I've seen, I it it looks good, Mike. It sounds good coming out of there, too, all the things you hear out of Pittsburgh. So that is exciting. But I think you hit it, Mike. You know, running game. Yeah. Can we get a running game this year? You know, they drafted the kid uh, McFarland out of Maryland to go with James Conner. Can he help out? He's like he's got a rocket up his butt. Maybe two of them, Mike. You know, and then, yeah, who is that receiver that's going to jump up? We saw James Washington take a step in the right direction last year. Uh, Deontay Johnson, he's a guy they drafted in, you know, in the mid rounds two, uh, two drafts ago. They need him to step up. Chase Claypool, who's it going to be? But uh, I, I'm with you, Mike. You know, they need that other guy along with Juju to take pressure off Juju so we can see what Juju's all about again, once again, too. Because, you know, I think one thing we saw last year is he's not a like primetime number one game changing type receiver. He needs somebody across from him to help him out a little bit. I do think that's the case, uh, but I I'm excited about the Steelers. This is the Keenan Allen argument that we had recently. Not that we had an argument because we both agreed. He had an argument with where he was placed on some top 10 lists. If you can't stretch the field and command double coverage, you're not a top end receiver. And I remember last year, I don't know that it was right around this time, but it was some point in that gulf between May and August where Juju came out and said how much he's working on getting open deep. The guys who are the best at it don't work at it. No. They just go do it. Right. Right? And that was the first flag for me that, that this is just because the guy was the team MVP in 2018 and that lit the fuse on Antonio Brown finally wanting out. You know, that's why Antonio Brown was upset. He knows that Juju got all those opportunities, all those catches, because he had the number one that was taking all the attention. 
Juju can't be the number one. He could be a great, 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 great number two, but they need someone to be the number one. And uh, that's one of the unknowns this year. And, you know, that, that's, that, that's why you put Antonio Brown on your list of teams the other day. The Steelers on the list of teams that should go get Antonio Brown because yeah. that would – instantly give them back the number one that they didn't have no uh, yeah exactly right you know yeah for right now you're you're gonna have to prove on unpro you know you're gonna have to rely on unproven commodities uh, that's that's the big thing and you know not that the other guy needs to be a number one or be antonio brown you can be a really good offense and have all number two type receivers you know or or, or a bunch of number threes and just a one real good number two and maybe that's the case, or they have to find the role or whatever it may be for certain guys here. But, you know, that that is the big thing. The run game gave them nothing last year. You know, the offensive line is getting up there in age. They're not quite as dominant as they were, you know, maybe four or five years ago. But, you know, they got to get more out of James Conner. They need more, you know, something out of this rookie Anthony McFarlane. And then if Big Ben stays healthy – you know, I, I think he's going to get this wide receiver group going. He'll get them confidence. It's hard when you're a young guy and you got a quarterback you know that can't really deliver the ball consistently is all over the place for you to grow as a receiver when you're not getting the right opportunities either. So, you know, I'm hopeful that they'll take the right steps. And as we talk about a lot, they're a team that always seems to know receivers. And you know I love that Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame, and I would be, wouldn't be shocked. He would be one of my under-the-radar rookie of the year candidates that I would throw out there to some people if they wanted to lay down some change right now. And here's the caveat that we need to attach here, at least I do. You may agree with me, Chris. You may not. If you agree with me, great. If you don't, I don't care. <laughs> I Just because you – know, if Ben Roethlisberger had this elbow thing when he was 25 – then, okay, we got it fixed. We did what we had to do. He's rehabbed. He's good to go. He's good to go for another 10 years. I think back to the photos of him, whether it was this camp last year or the one before that, where he looks like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man with the ice pack on his shoulder and an ice pack on this elbow, an ice pack on right. that elbow. That was me at training camp knee, last year pack. with him. Okay, all these ice packs, yeah. right? What, is the elbow the first of just the system breakdown? Here's a guy who has played for years, who's always carried around more weight than he should, banging on his joints and his bones and his cartilage and his ligaments, and getting hit a lot, getting injured from time to time. Is the elbow the first thing to go, and will it just be a matter of what's next? That If I'm a Steelers fan, that's the thing that has me awake at night worrying that it's back to the Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges show because they didn't go out and upgrade the backup quarterback position what do you think of that well uh, no I, I I I think it's something I'll be looking for too I don't expect that to be the case I don't you know uh but I mean your point is very real he took a beating he played the position about as physical as you could play it for a period of time and I don't know if he quite gets the respect for that you're right that would be what I'm scared a little bit too is that just has it all of it caught up to him and yeah, you're right. This is the first of many other issues, but I'm hoping that's not the case. And the big thing is with the elbow, and I saw it at training camp last year, and hopefully he's learned from it. Yeah, there's the picture. You know, yeah, he hadn't been throwing all offseason. He told me. He threw a few passes to his kids. That's all it was. And, you know, then all of a sudden you get into training camp and you start throwing the ball hard and the number of balls you throw per day, it wears you out to where he got tendonitis and obviously caused some damage in there to, to the ligaments. So uh, I'm hoping it's just that. But, yeah, Mike, that concern's real. There's no doubt. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.